When multiple doses of a drug are administered, there are several factors that affect the resulting plasma drug concentrations, which we need to consider. For the purposes of this introduction, we'll consider the scenario of multiple intravenous bolus doses, which is a simplification of most dosage regimens that are typically used in reality, but it will help us analyze the system. First, we should examine the scenario of multiple doses administered so far apart that they can be considered individual independent doses. This happens when the dosing interval is so long that drug concentrations from the first dose fall to essentially zero before the next dose is given. How long does such a dosing interval need to be? Well, it depends on the half-life of the drug. As we learned before, the half-life is the time needed for drug concentrations, as well as the amount of drug in the body, to decrease by one half. Therefore, by seven half-lives, 99% of the dose that was administered will have been eliminated from the body, and there is very little left that adds to the concentration resulting from the next dose. So, for a drug with a short half-life, like one hour, even if the drug is given twice a day, there will be minimal accumulation. However, if the drug has a longer half-life, say 8 hours, twice daily administration will result in significant accumulation. As we see in this slide, because the next dose is given while there is still a sizable portion of the previous dose in the body, the drug concentration starts to accumulate to concentrations that are higher than what they were after the first dose. The actual level of accumulation can be calculated using this formula, the derivation of which was shown in the chapter of your textbook assigned for this week's reading. Notice the variables in this equation are number of doses, the elimination rate constant, and the dosing interval. But it is also important to realize that accumulation does not continue to infinity, but drug concentrations start to plateau after some time. We say that drug concentrations have reached steady state. This is because as concentrations increase, the rate of excretion increases as well until a point is reached when the amount excreted over the period of a dosing interval is the same as the amount that is administered as a dose. Therefore, there is no further drug accumulation in the body. We can examine this from the perspective of the value of the accumulation factor. As the number of doses increases, the value of the accumulation factor tends towards a constant. This is because the value of the E term in the numerator tends towards zero for very large values of N, which represents the number of doses. When the value of the accumulation factor became, becomes constant, we call it the accumulation factor at steady state. The value of this accumulation factor is larger the smaller the values of the dosing interval, or tau, and the elimination rate constant, or K which will result in a greater value of the E term in the denominator. This results in the overall value of the denominator being a smaller decimal value, and the reciprocal of a smaller decimal is a larger number, and therefore the accumulation factor at steady state will be greater. We can calculate the peak plasma concentration at steady state, which occurs immediately after the dose is given, by multiplying the concentration after the first dose, which is C0, or the amount of the first dose, divided by the volume of distribution, by the accumulation factor at steady state. And similarly, we can calculate the trough plasma concentration, which is the concentration at the end of the dose dosing interval, by accounting for drug loss over the period of the dosing interval, which is represented by the last term of this equation. 